and closely examine CARELEC 2022's event partnerships, sponsorships, company and delegate participation, and marketing and promotions. I am your hostess, Ms. Karen Piper, Assistant Manager of Communications and Disaster Management. Joining me today is CARELEC's Executive Director, Dr. Cletus Burton, CARELEC's Marketing and Member Services Manager, Mrs. Alana Raymond, and Carolex Energy Solutions Advisor, Mr. Thomas Mitchke. Welcome colleagues, welcome audience, welcome to our members, our partners, our conference attendees, well-wishers, welcome to an inside look into CARIC 2022, and thank you so much for joining us. So we have 45 minutes, let's dive right in. So I will start off with Dr. Burton, Good day and welcome to an Inside Look with CARIC 2022. Thank you for joining us. So we will start off this discussion with just uh, talking about uh, CARILEX uh, partnerships and uh, CARILEX uh, members and strategic partners throughout the region. And we want to focus on CARILEX strategic vision, which is to be the premier association of energy service providers and their partners facilitating the development of world-class sustainable electric energy solutions for all peoples of the Caribbean. So Dr. Burton, can you expand on this strategic vision for us and how this uh, dives right into CARIC 2022 as we head into conference? Thank you, thank you, Karen. And it's truly a pleasure to be here to speak ahead of the conference. We are tremendously excited about this upcoming event and in particular, the partnerships that are driving it. And it just speaks to the heart of your question. Um, embedded in our vision statement, as you read, is the fact that the association uh, recognizes that we can't do it alone, that partnerships, collaboration is essential, are essential. And so to be the premier association of uh, energy service providers requires partnerships and to facilitate the development of world-class sustainable electric energy solutions uh, requires ongoing collaboration. And so the theme for the conference uh, spins off from that, navigating the course of power sector modernization and combating climate change with green electricity and resilient infrastructure is also in keeping with our vision statement and the mandate of the CARIC platform over the many years. Uh, for those who are not aware, um, CARIC uh, was a, is an online platform set up uh, about maybe six, seven years ago, again, through partnerships, uh, regional and internationally, um, from IRENA to RMI and other key players internationally in the space of uh, renewable energy and energy efficiency. And what we've done recently is to rebrand that platform to the uh, resilient energy community as opposed to only renewable. Obviously renewable is a component of resilience. And so this conference would speak to various facets of this mandate and our, my colleagues on the, on the uh, live stream will elaborate more on the conference content. Uh, Thomas and Alana will get into the details and connect many dots, um, but just rest assured that we will have a strategic orientation to this conference. We are hoping that uh, through the deliberate planning, the strategic selection of topics, we will not just have any semblance of what we sometimes call in the region a talk shop. It won't be just another talk shop. It will be a forum, a dynamic forum, where we explore, examine topics in depth with a view to continue the collaboration, the examination, the implementation of these key actions that are needed for energy transitioning. And that I think is maybe one of the key differences strategically with our conference. We are looking at not just a one-off, we are not just a conference planning organization. We don't plan conferences for having conferences sake, yes. Uh, we are a regional association of 30 plus years and we have a membership of uh, not just electric utilities, but IPPs and associate members who have an ongoing business interest in the region, many of whom live in the region. And so this for us is not just a show. It's, it's, it's really a, a very critical issue surrounding how we live in the region and the quality of life for the people of the region. And that's why our vision statement, Karen, as you read, makes reference to solutions for all peoples, all peoples of the Caribbean region, because we recognize our mandate 
of having to live and work in the region and having a better quality of life, it is critical that we achieve our mandate as an association of electric energy providers. Um, let me pause here because okay. I know I might have exhausted your question <laughs> and give you a chance to maybe ask another. <laughs> but all critical information, Dr. Burton, all critical information. Mm -hmm. um, as you rightly said, CARIC 2022 is directly aligned to CARIC's strategic vision of facilitating world-class um, electric energy solutions. And of course, a look at the conference agenda will cl clearly demonstrate this yes. alignment. Uh, can you speak more to uh, the topics of sustainability in terms of electric energy and other forms of energy in the region and resilience and for what that means for Carilic and its members? Yes, indeed. I, I think the topic, the question of resilience has come to the fore over the recent years. And to us at Carilic is more than just a buzzword. Um, we have seen the devastating effects of climate change on our small island developing states. We are mindful that our own contribution to carbon emissions is minuscule, um, and we suffer vastly disproportionately the adverse effects of climate change. So we are living in, in very uh, perilous times as it were. And so what we are doing, as I said, is not just a show, it's something very critical to our very survival um, as a region and resilience is required to survive and to develop. And so part of that resilience, obviously, would be energy efficiency, uh, renewable energy, making that transition happen. And that is why our participants will see uh, a wide range of topics uh, to that end, from the regulatory roundtable uh, to the energy storage workshop. And our sponsors are, and, and partners are mindful of that from CDB, GIZ, um, CICRI, the Canadian government, um, are all coming to bear on this topic, recognizing that we are living in, in difficult challenging times and this transitioning uh, requires greater resilience. And this conference will be solutions oriented. It will be action oriented because as I said previously, we intend to carry on um, with the uh, focus on these themes post-conference um, in the various forums on the CARIC platforms, hopefully having uh, user groups having task force, looking at funding for pilot projects, and really having a, an impact in terms of implementation. We often have this implementation deficit. And so we, are, we really want this conference to be a catalyst for implementation of some strategic actions that are needed on the part of not just the electric utilities, but on the part of the regulators, the governments who own uh, 60, 70 plus percent of the electric utilities in the region. It's an opportunity for us to really collaborate and make a difference in the transition in both in terms of the scope and the pace of the transition in that is required. Thank you very much, Dr. Burton. I know you already touched on this, um, but the CARIC platform, uh, CARIC yes. 2022 uh, sort of serves as a launch pad um, for mm -hmm. the CARIC platform, which was recently renamed. Yes. Uh, recently, uh, we released a press release uh, titled Carilec Rebrands Learning Platform mm -hmm. and merges the conference to increase capacity building among members. And if you would just permit me, I will read a short yes. excerpt from yes. that press release. Uh, Carrick will serve as a tool in support of all utility workforce development activities offered by Carilec. The rebranding of the platform to Carilec's Resilient Energy Community, Carrick, formerly Carilec Renewable Energy Community will prioritize capacity development on three key pillars of learning and development, which would be organizational and leadership development, resilient infrastructure, and disaster response and energy transitioning. Uh, so Dr. Burton, based on that excerpt, can you just expand for us on the importance of leadership? Of course, mm -hmm. one of our previous uh, conferences was the Chief Executive yes. Officers and Leadership Conference. Can you just expand on the importance of leadership as it relates to uh, furthering the transition, uh, the energy transition within the Caribbean and how Carilec plans to strategically place mm -hmm. itself as an association to lead that transition in the region? 
Yeah, thanks for that, Karen. I'm really glad you shared excerpts on that press release because it really sets the backdrop for some of what we have been talking about. And obviously, leadership is critical in this transitioning. Um, we, we see demonstrations of that in terms of what is happening on the CARIC platform, uh, persons demonstrating innovativeness and leadership, not just in terms of thought and words, but in terms of actions uh, towards the transitioning. And so what we are trying to do here is to, as I said before, catalyze that, uh, facilitate its uh, increased uh, adoption across the electric utility sector, um, within policymaking realms, uh, regulatory apparatuses, yes. and basically having this um, be a greater sense, have a greater sense of urgency towards it. I think if it's one thing we want to emphasize is that it can't be business as usual. It can't be just we travel to the destination and have good sessions and interact, and then we go back to our various um, stations and nothing changes, right? Mm -hmm. um, we really want this to be a, a forum where we could springboard actions and develop even deeper partnerships in terms of solutions as to how we could get certain things done within specific timeframes. And again, Carolec is a regional association. We are embedded in the region. We are located in the region. We happen to have this in Miami, but our realm of operation is in the Caribbean region. Uh, for logistic purposes, we are in Miami, but we have this uh, drive towards uh, improving the energy space in the region, which as we all know, will facilitate greater social and economic development. It will make us more competitive as a region, the tourism sector, the agricultural sector, almost all sectors, manufacturing sector, uh, will be better off and more cost competitive if we're able to make these strides in this sector. So I would really implore, implore policymakers to really take this uh, in a greater degree of urgency because it really catal catalyzes development across all sectors. If we're able to get the, the, the cost um, of electricity uh, to more affordable levels, uh, green the, the, the sector, um, become more resilient to climate change impacts, we will see a knock-on effect across all sectors, not, not least of which would be tourism, which as we know is a key sector for our economic survival. So this is not just a side issue. This is not just about the climate change people or the electric utility people. <laughs> it's really about development of the region front and center. If we get this right, we really can be on the path to a tremendous trajectory for development of all sectors, of all peoples, and really make a difference in the next uh, few years. Yes, absolutely agreed. Uh, this uh, translates into all sectors across the yes. Caribbean and beyond. And finally, Dr. Burton, um, we know a conference of this magnitude, uh, Carolec on its own, um, needs the support of members and partners, and of course, uh, agencies uh, regionally and internationally. Um, can you just speak to the two key components of this conference, which would be the energy storage workshop and the regulatory round team? Uh, but with a focus on our sponsors and partners, namely for our energy storage workshop at the Car Caribbean Development Bank, CDB, and uh, GIC, uh, the German Agency for International Cooperation, also for our regulatory roundtable, uh, CDB again, a supporting partner. And we have also partnered with uh, facilitating partners uh, such as CICRI, Caribbean Center for Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency, yes. CARICOM, and the Organization of Caribbean Utility uh, Regulators, UCO. Uh, can you just speak to those partnerships and their significance in terms of our uh, development as a corporation? And also, I, it signals a lot of uh, regional unity as well to put on a conference of this magnitude. So can you just expand on the value of those partnerships and sponsorships? Well, thank you so much, Karen, for that question and the opportunity. I like the way you've outlined them already, so I need not repeat all of them. <laughs> <laughs> just to mention, the Government of Canada is, I think, the funding agency through which we get the CDB support. So the Government of Canada, and I also understand the USAID has come on board through CCRI in terms of sponsorship um, through, through this uh, regional collaboration. So also it would be remiss of me not to mention that the collaboration and partnership 
um, actually starts within the Secretariat, the excellent team at the Caribbean Secretariat um, under the leadership of Alana Raymond. So I really don't have much to do here um, except come and do appearances like this. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so, so really the, the collaboration starts at the Secretariat. We have an excellent team. Uh, all hands on deck uh, when we have events like this. On the technical side, Thomas is providing invaluable assistance and guidance on the communications front, Karen, yourself. I mean, everybody's really stepping up to make this a collaborative effort uh, within the Secretariat across our membership. We have full support of the board of directors um, and we see from the registrations, we're really already um, uh, arriving meeting targets that we had set. I won't call specific numbers. Um, because we are still open for registration. Um, so yeah, so the collaboration is critical both at the institutional level is what I'm trying to say, at the organizational level, and that cascades and tumbles across uh, regionally with our partners, Secre, CARICOM Secretariat, OCR, and internationally. So we're extremely delighted and pleased and thankful for these partnerships. Um, this cannot be done um, in isolation. As I say, no man is an island. And these partnerships are really critical. And I think also it points the way, as we keep saying, to a more collaborative approach to the transitioning as opposed to a contentious combative approach in terms of bringing the players together, as you mentioned, the round table, regulatory round table. So we bring the policymakers, the regulators, the developers, um, the implementers, the, uh, obviously the um, utilities, around the table and discuss, okay, how do we make this transition work in the best interest of the region? And so that we make these advancements as efficiently and as expeditiously as possible, given that we have a lot to do and uh, we, we have little time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, thank you for expanding on that, Dr. Burton. Uh, this time I will move to Thomas uh, to speak on uh, CARIC 2022's agenda uh, with a focus, of course, on the regulatory roundtable and energy uh, storage workshop, mm -hmm. and also um, the content blocks that uh, we have designed uh, for a very engaging and educational and informative agenda. Uh, so Thomas, let's start off with the regulatory roundtable. Um, the theme for this roundtable is introducing supporting regulation to accelerate energy transition. Uh, can you just expand on this theme and why this particular theme was chosen for the round table and also give us an inside look into its importance for electricity regulation in the Caribbean? Yes, thank you very much, Karen. I will try to do that in a nutshell. Good afternoon to everybody and good afternoon colleagues again as well. Um, yeah. In a way, um, the, this regulatory roundtable series that is already established since 2016 uh, on, on previous CARILAC uh, conferences is somewhat the prelude to, to the CARILAC conference that actually addresses uh, the topics of energy transition and, and grid resilience from different perspectives, policy and regulatory perspectives, the business perspective, um, Mm -hmm. technology and in innovation and learning and development. And uh, we have set this regulatory roundtable at the very beginning uh, also of the, uh, of the conference as also a sound policy and regulatory framework is one of the first milestones and actually key success for the factors for a sustainable and successful energy transition. Um, so um, what we seeking here together with our uh, hosting partners, the Secre, CARICOM and UCA, as you mentioned earlier, is actually to identify um, current needs, uh, challenges, uh, but also best practice examples and possible areas for, for this collaboration and co uh, cooperation that uh, Dr. Burton mentioned earlier among sector stakeholders and regional institutions. So the past years have uh, well, worldwide, but also especially in the Caribbean shown mm -hmm. how important the matter of energy, energy transition has become, um, how important it is to have a, a low fuel import dependency, and of course, to decarbonize our power sectors. Um, 
and therefore um, the, the the word acceleration in the scene, right? We, we're yeah. trying to look mm -hmm. really, okay, what has been achieved so far? There are a lot of um, international best practices, but also regional best practice. How can we uh, benefit and learn from each other and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and jointly actually work on a, on a sound policy and regulatory framework for this energy transition? Absolutely, absolutely agreed. Uh, Thomas, let's move on to the energy storage workshop. Um, yeah. Of course, I mentioned the supporting partners, uh, CDB and GIC, um, but can you also enlighten us on um, the importance of battery storage systems um, for Caribbean utilities in particular, and, yeah. and why we thought it's uh, very prudent to include this uh, energy storage workshop as, as part of the conference. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, in general, um, worldwide, I think um, energy storage is one of the key enablers for energy transition. Um, given the characteristic of, well, the most cost-efficient renewable energy sources that we have, solar and wind power, we all know they do not generate the whole time. So mm -hmm. um, we need to have a buffer capacity uh, for the time from during nighttime or when there is no wind in order mm -hmm. to balance our, our electricity demand and actually the available supply. And uh, they also serve uh, to reduce the risk of power outages, uh, especially after heavy weather events. Mm -hmm. And this makes it now particularly important for the Caribbean, probably even more than for interconnected uh, mainland power grids. Because the islands are not connected with other grids, these um, need to balance uh, demand and supply is even higher because we cannot push exceeding electricity into another grid or we cannot take just electricity from another grid. Um, and then, of course, the Caribbean is, of course, highly vulnerable. Also, uh, as it shown, has been shown in the past to the impacts from climate change. This makes it actually, I would say, one of the most important topics for energy transition, actually, in the Caribbean, the energy storage discussion. Yes, definitely agreed. Um, so we're all very thrilled that this is a, a key component of CARIC 2022. Uh, so let's move on to uh, the agenda highlights. Of course, the regulatory roundtable and the energy storage workshop uh, making up a key components of the agenda. But in terms of uh, the content blocks that we have planned, uh, mm -hmm. can you just give us a brief overview of those content blocks and uh, what are the key takeaways for attendees in terms of uh, knowledge, learning, uh, capacity building as well as it relates to the content blocks for the agenda? Yes, okay. Um, I will start with uh, uh, our, our approach, how we uh, have uh, designed the agenda. So, um, yeah, CARIC itself, but also especially the conference now, we try to address the uh, three main topics for energy transition and climate re resilience from the perspective of utilities and power sector stakeholders, which are uh, renewable energy expansion, power grid resilience, uh, when it comes a, to the integration again from renewable energy expansion, you already see how all the topics are interlinked, and but also grid resilience when it comes to uh, disaster resilience in terms of outages and reliability of supply. And then the second uh, area is the area of new energy services, which relates to uh, providing supply for e-mobility, electromobility, uh, and supporting actually the implementation of energy efficiency measures on the customer side. So these are the strain, three main topics. Um, for which we have uh, defined various thematical blocks, sub-blocks, uh, if you want to say. Um, and um, these block sessions are designed in the following way. We, uh, we have industry experts or technology and service providers that present uh, best practice experiences, recommendations, innovative solutions and products. 
uh, through specific input presentation, and we have panels uh, com comprised by uh, utility experts and, and other sector experts that will actually reflect on these input presentation, provide the, the con context and the setup for each thematic block, and, and at the end come up with some conclusions and key takeaways. So that actually um, the attendees have for each of the thematic blocks, you can see that in the ag agenda, it goes from policy planning uh, qu quite into the technical details with regard to microgrids, um, grid flexibility, cybersecurity, and so on. Um, and attendees actually will have um, specific key takeaways after each session. And um, what are the key takeaway or key messages attendees can, can take away? Um, I would say in a nutshell, that would ideally, yeah, to understand, okay, energy transition is a very complex process that requires actually a lot of yeah. collaboration, contributions and efforts from all of us, right? From all sector players. But there is a large amount and variety of possible solutions and implementation options. Um, and um, that, that in a way help us to, to, to work together on these joint goals of achieving a sustainable power sector that provides clean, affordable and reliable electricity for everybody. And through the collaboration and cooperation was actually is yeah, the main idea of the, of the CAREC uh, community, but also the platform um, we can really uh, benefit from, from, from different experiences and jointly tailor them to the Caribbean context. Definitely, thank you for that, Thomas. And uh, just to add um, that it definitely is energy transition in the region is definitely a multi-sectoral and stakeholder approach and I, I think uh, based on the content blocks that we have uh, developed for the conference uh, we have definitely made sure to include all key stakeholders uh, yeah. so that the conversation is very holistic very wholesome and um, doesn't leave any key stakeholders out um, just to also add uh, that the conference uh, agenda strategically begins with the planning and implementation of uh, energy transition and uh, closes off with uh, a focus on uh, financing resilience because, of course, uh, energy transition uh, to be successful needs to be adequately financed. Um, so, you know, this was a very uh, strategically developed um, by our team. Um, so, Thomas, uh, just to wrap up here, um, based on the agenda that we developed, what would you say is uh, the overall goal uh, for Carolec in terms of the content, uh, especially to do with the, the technical aspect of energy transition? What would you say is, is the main goal that we hope all stakeholders uh, can walk away with uh, after attending this conference? Well, I think the main goal is um, is to show we have solutions. Uh, there are, or not we have, uh, there are solutions and uh, a high variety. Um, it is a very complex topic, energy transition, or a very complex process that involves so many technical, social, legal aspects, uh, financial aspects that it is very important that uh, that we that we work together and actually have this open exchange what what uh, what works for us what does not work for us where still do we have still needs we can communicate our needs and address them and find them also the right partner for the future um, to, to solve these issues definitely thank you so much uh, thomas uh, for expanding on uh, the key components of our agenda, of course, the regulatory roundtable, the energy storage workshop, and of course, the content blocks, uh, which focus on uh, the key strategic areas of energy transition. Um, just to remind our viewers and our audience that you can uh, post your, your questions uh, into uh, the comments section. Uh, 
whether you're viewing via Facebook, via LinkedIn, or via Twitter, or uh, through our YouTube platform, uh, you can post your uh, questions in there for our panelists. And of course, at the end, we will have a short Q&A question, um, Q&A segment, sorry, where your questions will be answered. Uh, so we move on and to Alana, um, who will elaborate on uh, the conference uh, merger, event planning, uh, sponsorship, uh, expand on our exhibition component of CAREC 2022, and also uh, speak on the marketing and promotions for CAREC 2022. Uh, so welcome, Alana. Um, we will start off with uh, the conference merger and event planning. Uh, so some people may not know, however, uh, CARIC 2022 is a new conference, might I add, um, it being a merger of uh, two of our staple conferences on the CARILEC events calendar. So Alana, uh, can you just elaborate on this conference merger for us and the event planning details um, that have had to be ironed out uh, to facilitate this merger into CARIC 22 as we now know. Thank you, Karen, and thank you colleagues for being here with me today and audience. Uh, Karen, when we look at the CARIC 2022 conference, as Dr. Burton said, he touched on more of the strategic view of why we merged the event. Uh, but the association recognized um, in early on in the pandemic that there was an increasing cost of fuel um, globally, and consequently that affected the travel cost for persons to attend the conference and also significant challenges with airlift as well. Uh, so the COVID-19 pandemic is still ongoing and uh, we did not see our members probably in over two years. So we really had to change the way we plan events, especially since going fully virtual with a lot of our events. And given this is only our second um, in-person event um, in 2022 and our first event being in May, um, Carolet being one of the early uh, planners um, uh, organizations to host the in-person event, there was a lot of challenges and a lot to manage um, from the event planning um, perspective. So the region is still recording increase, increase in cases of COVID-19 and these challenging circumstances, I would say, um, and the fact that there is a significant overlap of our attendees for both conferences being the engineering and the procurement conference and the renewable energy um, and smart grid conference, we fought from an event planning perspective at Puden to facilitate the, the merger, to reduce on travel costs for our members and stakeholders, and of course, accommodation costs, which has skyrocketed. Um, but as an association, we were able to secure very you know, favorable rates for our attendees um, at the Hyatt Regency. And um, of course, uh, reducing on the associate exposure um, to the COVID-19 um, virus. So I must say the entire team has come on board in terms of assisting us in planning of that event. Traditionally, when we host our events in the Caribbean region, we normally have about 25 to 30 um, event planners from the, our, our utilities assisting us on the ground planning out the event. Um, but in the case of Miami, it's the entire team, the Carolec team here, planning with the hotel, planning with various vendors in Miami to execute a successful event. Thank you, Alana. Yes, uh, definitely a collaborative um, effort on merging uh, the renewable energy and smart grid conference and the engineering and pro procurement conference into CARIC 2022. And of course, uh, this merger into CARIC 2022 would not be possible without our valued sponsors. Uh, we have many sponsors that have come on board uh, to support CARIC 2022. And of course, as we mentioned earlier, our regional and international partners, uh, but specifically focusing on our sponsorship, can you just elaborate on uh, the valued contributions that they have made uh, towards ensuring the success of the event and also the fact that a lot of our sponsors are actually Carolec members. Uh, can you just expand on the importance of um, those kind of collaborations um, for event planning and for Carolec as an institution? 
Uh, Karen, let me just echo how grateful we are for our sponsors. I mean, this year we have for the CARIB 2020 conference, given that it's a new merger, 11 sponsors on board and majority of them, about 90% of them being our CARILEC members and some of them being members for over three decades. Um, so I just want to take a quick um, minute to just mention some of our sponsors, which are MSHS, Agreco, Belco, which is our utility member in Bermuda, American Wire Group, Acceleron, which is a new member who just came on board um, this year, BWSC, Tantalus, Wardzilla, Classic Controls, Inc., Altec and Coppers, who have been sponsoring our line workers, um, Rodeo and Symposium, have now come on board to the CARIC 2020 conference. So we are so excited they were able to come on board to help us in hosting this conference because of course, without their assistance, this would not be possible. And I mean, we have a number of amazing social events alongside our sponsors, all get towards encouraging networking, fostering stronger relationships that like Dr. Burton um, mentioned earlier. It's not just a talk shop. We want persons to leave the conference with stronger relationships that could help us move through the energy transition for the future. So again, Absolutely. I just want to say thank you to our sponsors. Thank you so much for coming on board. We've been meeting with everyone over the last two weeks and um, we're very excited to host the event with you and our social events. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, we say a huge thank you to all of our sponsors, uh, without whom uh, this event would not be possible. And speaking of uh, collaborations in terms of Carolex members and them coming on board and supporting us, um, not just in our events, actually, um, but through a lot of the services and uh, capacity building that we provide, it is through um, the engagement and the support, um, the expertise um, from our members, I would also mention. And speaking of expertise, Alana, we have a number of uh, speakers at the conference who are also Carolic members uh, focusing on their uh, particular areas of expertise and knowledge and training. So can you just elaborate on those contributions for us and what we can, what attendees can look forward to uh, for CARIC 2022 in terms of it, the speakers for the conference. Uh, certainly, Karen. So for this conference, we have an overwhelming 55, over 55 speakers from the regulatory roundtable all the way down to the energy storage workshop. And a number of that, those speakers are actually our associates, our affiliate members, our utility members. So they're all coming together to just create a bed of knowledge at the conference um, to share with our stakeholders, to share with the region, and just to continue the discussion and just to really look at how we can move through the energy transition, how we can create more resilience. Um, in the Caribbean for the energy sector. And we really want to thank a lot of our utility members, our associate affiliate IPP members for coming on board and contributing to such a healthy agenda um, for CARIC 2022. Yes, definitely agreed. Uh, such a rich and engaging uh, agenda and of course poss made possible by our speakers and our members, our partners. So uh, we are definitely extremely grateful to them for giving off their time and expertise um, to ensure that this conference is a success. Uh, speaking on the success of CARIC 2022, Alana, uh, can you give us some insight on uh, the participating uh, companies that we have, uh, that have collaborated with us for CARIC 2022, and of course, our utility participation, which is extremely critical, um, because as we know, a lot of our attendees are coming to network with the utilities and, and to form valuable, uh, long-lasting relationships with them. Uh, so can you just expand on uh, the, how our registrations have been going and the participation of various uh, companies and organizations, specifically our utilities? Happy to do so, Karen. So I wouldn't have time on this live to go through all of our participating utilities, <laughs> our participating companies, but I will say we have over 105 participating companies. Uh, will be represented. The conference will represent 33 countries um, globally, including uh, over 22 Caribbean countries, um, over 25 utility members, 
and participating senior management utility members are in the region of over 70 persons. Uh, so it's quite a number of persons coming together, companies coming together, countries coming together to share knowledge. So it's not only regional Caribbean countries, we have international companies from far as Suriname, Switzerland, the USA, Canada, a number of persons converging at the CARIB 2022 conference. Absolutely. Uh, very, very uh, great uh, overview of registration, participation, especially from our member utilities and, of course, uh, senior uh, management uh, persons from the utilities as well, all coming on board uh, for CARIC 2022. Uh, so, Alana, as we wrap up here, uh, I just want to touch on if you could share with us what are your goals and objectives uh, in your capacity as marketing lead at Carilec uh, for the hosting of Carilec events uh, as we go on into 2023. As we know, uh, COVID-19 is uh, still uh, very active uh, within the region and beyond. And of course, as you alluded to earlier, um, this has changed the way that we would go about our event planning. So if you could give our audience an insight into Carilex events for 2023 and um, how that has been modified, uh, taking into account uh, external factors of, such as the pandemic. Thank you, Karen. Well, 2023, we certainly want to take all our events back to in-person events, which would be about four events for the year. Uh, we have been working very closely with our hotels, especially managing the COVID-19 pandemic, given now our protocols have been dropped. Uh, Carolec will still do what we need to do to uphold the protocol in terms of, you know, enforcing mask wearing, just to ensure we don't have a spread of COVID-19. Uh, we've always tried, you know, to increase the quality of our event year on year on year. And of course, our agenda outputs. This is why over the last two years, um, in, in conjunction with Thomas, partner Nick Thomas, and working very closely with him over the last two years in reformatting the agenda. Um, so this one, just to encourage more engagement, to encourage more utility participation on those panels within the agenda. And of course, for 2023, we want to, we want to continue our speed networking event, which is quite popular. And I think a lot of our members really missed um, that aspect of the conference. So we've returned to our speed networking event, where we, it's really like a speed dating event where our members get to meet all of our associate, our affiliate members within one space, within about an hour and a half. So you, our members would not have to you know, fly to 30, 40 countries to meet various vendors who probably send line workers equipment, engines, um, LED lighting, so they get to meet them in one room. Uh, we also hope to continue our utility update session, which we've now just rebranded and changed to lessons learned and best practices. Uh, where we, our utilities come and give an update on what's happening at the utility, how the energy transition is going, the challenges, the technologies that we, they would need, just to ensure that our members are kept abreast with technology um, and what's available on the region and an international market. And of course, um, one of my main goals is to ensure we meet the needs of our members um, in 2023. And of course, working closely with our partners in the sector so we can all contribute to more of a resilient and energy future. Thank you very much, Alana. Thank you for that insight into what our attendees and our members can expect from Carilex events uh, for 2023, and also for providing us with the insight into the merger uh, which has established CARIC uh, 2022 and uh, our sponsors, our speakers, certainly a lot of key players coming together uh, to ensuring that CARIC 2022 is a resounding success. So definitely viewers, uh, you need to be there, register now. Uh, so that you can be part of the truly uh, Caribbean experience, uh, learning, uh, educational, uh, capacity building experience uh, from Carolec. Uh, before we uh, wrap up this live session, uh, we just have a question from one of our viewers, uh, which states, how would you help reassure those countries hesitant to making the transition to renewable energy due to their current reliance on fossil fuels? So I will direct this question to uh, Thomas, 
uh, in his uh, technical capacity. Um, so uh, basically this viewer is asking, how would you reassure those countries who are hesitant uh, towards making that uh, transition to renewable energy? Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Aaron. Just trying to find the mute button. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that is a very good question, and unfortunately, not uh, not in a very short answer. Uh, <laughs> uh, not possible to give a very short answer on that. Um, I mean, of course, it's, uh, the countries uh, des decide themselves on on their pathway or the the, the speed uh, how they can uh, how fast they can implement energy transition, um, and every country and, and jurisdiction has his own particular individual conditions and, and circumstances to consider for that, right? So um, what we actually um, try to, to do is uh, facilitate the discussion, learning uh, from each other, uh, where do we have best practices? Where is somebody who who would require support from 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 colleagues or um, yeah from from regional or inter even international uh, experts um, um, and and then of course to advocate the topic itself uh, is, is I think a, a huge. Uh, activity for us and mm -hmm. i think also for a lot of um, sector stakeholders so it's a very complex process and mm -hmm. i think um, it requires not only a change in the mindset of or specific uh, policy decision makers but among us all right the customer has to take responsibility um, they can do Customers can do certain things by themselves, uh, by either saving energy or by do, by having a small renewable energy plant on their home. Um, and uh, and with our events and activities, we we are trying to contribute to that. Thank you, Thomas. I think definitely a key takeaway mm -hmm. here is that um, this process is a multifaceted one and uh, not one that can be arrived in, in just one particular route or one particular direction. Um, I think it involves a lot of collaboration, as you mentioned, um, which is really the hallmark of CARIC 2022 in terms of bringing all the key uh, stakeholders together um, onto uh, one forum um, where they can discuss their challenges and, of course, uh, pave a way forward, which in itself would be tailored uh, to each uh, country, as you mentioned, jurisdiction, and what their particular restrictions are, and also their resources as well. Um, so definitely right. a, a complex issue um, with no uh, one particular route um, towards the goal, but I think um, the importance here, as we are uh, demonstrating through CARIC 2022 is that having that collaboration and discussion is a uh, very critical, uh, which we are hoping to uh, successfully um, initiate and develop at CARIC 2022. Uh, so uh, we're actually a little over time. Uh, so now I will open the floor um, to all of my colleagues uh, to just give your final words um, on CARIC 2022, this inside look, and uh, to, to just share with our viewers your final thoughts. Um, so I will start with you, Alana, uh, just your final thoughts and comments uh, as we wrap up our live stream. Thank you, Karen. So I would just say a huge thank you again to our sponsors. And of course, if you haven't registered to attend CARIC 2022, it's not too late. You still have over a week to do so. Uh, we still have hotel rooms, so you won't be left out on the street. You can still book your hotel room. Reach out to our team at events at carolec.org, or you can go on to www.carolec.org um, to view our event agenda, to register as an exhibitor. Uh, the team is standing by, and we're working towards having a really successful event. So reach out to us if you're interested in becoming an exhibitor. If you're still interested in becoming a sponsor, we have one or two sponsor packages 
are still available. And we look forward to hosting you at the CARIC 2022 conference and of course um, in 2023 as well. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Alana. Thomas, uh, final comments from you as we wrap up our live stream. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, well, just uh, that I'm really, really exciting now um, um, for the conference. Uh, in the past years, a lot happened in the region. We heard about a lot of uh, great pilot projects or initiatives that have started, that were implemented for energy transition and power sector resilience. And it, I'm really looking forward to meeting all the sector stakeholders and, and, and hear about their success stories or even also their challenges. Thank you, Thomas. And uh, Dr. Burton, your final thoughts and comments for CARIC 2022 as we wrap up our live stream. Uh, if you just unmute, Dr. Burton, I think you're still muted. I was indeed, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well, first of all, I'd like to again thank the tremendous team effort here at the Secretariat, the staff, those who are on screen today, and those behind the scenes um, for pulling this together. We're almost at the finish line. And so we really want to acknowledge the tremendous efforts of all of our team members to making this happen. A special thanks to those participants who have already registered. Look forward to seeing you in Miami, our sponsors and our partners as well. A special thanks to you and a special word to those who are viewing who have not yet registered. Registered as Alana indicated, we still have a few rooms left. <laughs> um, we welcome you to register on our website. Look forward to seeing you in Miami and let this be the continuation or the start of something phenomenal towards energy transition in, in the region. So thank you for viewing. Thank you for your time and look forward to seeing you in Miami in a few days from now. Thank you very much, Dr. Burton. Uh, thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Alana. Uh, thank you for a very engaging discussion and providing that insight into the planning of CARIC 2022, mm -hmm. our partners that have come on board with us, our sponsors. Uh, our planning and uh, development of the agenda, the content blocks in the agenda. Also, um, our special features of this conference, which would be the regulatory roundtable and the energy storage workshop. And of course, of our members who have significantly contributed uh, towards uh, the expertise sharing, knowledge sharing, um, that will be uh, displayed uh, through our agenda um, on the upcoming conference and also uh, for their partnerships in terms of sponsors. Uh, before we wrap up, we just want to say a big thank you to our sponsors, which would be MSHS, our diamond sponsor, Greco, our platinum sponsor, Belco, Emerald sponsor, AWG, Emerald sponsor, Acceleron Gold sponsor, Altec Silver sponsor, and our bronze sponsors, BWSC, Tantalus, Wazilla, Classic Controls Inc. and Coppers. So thank you to all of our sponsors. As Alana mentioned, uh, we, registration is still open. So you still have an opportunity to join CARIC 2022. Head on to our website, www.carilec.org and go on to our events page and you can register there as a delegate or as an exhibitor. And as she mentioned as well, we are still have one or two sponsorship packages. So it's not too late. Reach out to our events team at events at carolet.org and we would be happy to welcome you to CARIC 2022. So on behalf of my colleagues here today and the CARILEC Secretariat, I thank you so much for joining us on our very first live stream event, might I add, an inside look into CARIC 2022. I am Karen C. Piper, the Assistant Manager for Communications and Disaster Management with CARILEC. Thank you for joining us and do have a good rest of your day. Bye-bye. <laughs>